Hi, my name's Kelly. I'm from Federation University. Uh, we're just starting a big project with the Victorian Government. Genetic analysis is going to be included in that project. Um, so I'm in charge of managing the citizen scientists in their collection of koala scats. And from the scats we can find, um, we get the DNA from the scats, from the surface of the scats, and we can analyse the scats, the DNA, um, and look for things like we can find out the disease status of the koalas so looking at chlamydia and koala retrovirus we can find out what sex they are and we can also find out where they're from so their ancestor origins so we can figure out whether they're translocated koalas or whether they're remnant koalas of the Streslecki genome um, so when we're looking at the scat so this is koala scat the DNA is on the surface of the scat so we need to wash the, the scat and um, isolate that DNA and figure out all of these bits of information. Mm. Alright, so <laughs> these are all the different types of scats, common scats that you can find out in the bush. So we've got here, pretty hard to see, um, find this. So that's a sugar glider scat, so pretty similar to rats, mice. Uh, this one's kangaroo. This one's wombat, this is wallaby, and this is brush-tailed possum scat. So really similar, these two are really similar. Brush-tailed possum and, that one's a bit better. Um, brush-tailed possum and koala are really similar. And that one's ring-tailed possum. So that's not a really good scat, brush-tailed possum, but yeah, they're very similar um, when you're looking for them in the bush. So when we, usually what they'll look like on the ground is just like that, pretty hard to find. Pretty camouflage. But fresh scats will be an olive green colour and um, these are really old. So what we want to have find is preferably the olive green colour or um, if they're a day or two old they'll have like a black glossy finish on them. So you want to have those scats. So you don't want the really old scats like these ones so that's a really that's a really old scat so if you see something like that you don't want to pick it up you want it to have like a really glossy finish on it and then what happens um, is if you're out in the bush you just pick it up with a with a toothpick hopefully we can prick it without touching it with your fingers um, like what I just did so prick, picking up with the toothpicks and then you want to pop it into one a container like this or you guys will have a container like that just with some polystyrene foam and just sitting it upright in the foam so you're sitting it up like that just for a couple of days like that to keep it dry and then after a couple of days um, if you can send it in the post you'll pop it into a container like this So you'll pop all the scats in, so try and get, not with your hands, but try and get as many scats as you can into the container. Um, and then you're popping the paper down or tissue paper to stop it from rolling. Um, the thing is with when you're touching the scats, it can take off the surface of the, the, the DNA, so it can affect the DNA, so try not to touch it. But if it's all in together in there, when I get it, I can just pick out those ones that haven't been touched. And then afterwards, just popping a desiccant sachet on top like that, just to absorb the moisture so it doesn't go mouldy. Because if they go mouldy, um, the, the DNA concentration will come up really high, but that's of the mould DNA, not of the, scat, the koala DNA. Um, and also try to collect the scats um, on a dry night, after a dry night. Um, and not when it's raining because the water can affect the the DNA. There's like an enzyme reaction that happens with the DNA and it, and it degrades it. So, yeah, it's better to get scats when they're dry, fresh and dry. And then popping it into um, an express post bag and sending it off to me 